Hey everybody, it's Brian. Welcome to the 134th Q tutorial with C++ and GUI programming. We're going to be continuing the high-performance TCP server design. This will be part three. Um, I did get a, a message on Facebook last night saying, hey bro, yeah, you got your numbers wrong. I guess there's two 132s. So, yeah, this is actually going to be 135, but I'm just going to keep the numbers because, well, I'm lazy. And, uh... Hey, while I'm looking at this, we had some feedback. Slumdog says, nine hours ago, uh, in TCP connections except when connecting disconnect and error, I get no matching function call. Hmm. I copied them from TCP connection set socket where they worked. Interesting. We're going to look at that real quick. So... You know, I think my headset just cut out. I've got this wireless headset, and it just drives me nuts. Because I won't know when it cuts out, but I'll hear it beep when it reconnects. So, I'm sorry, I'll repeat what I just said in case it did cut out. If I didn't, just fast forward through this. Um, Slumdog is saying that in the TCP connections, except when he connects the disconnect and error signal slots up, he gets a no matching function call. So he copied them from TCP connections set socket. I've already gone ahead and done that. I'm I'm not sure where he was getting it. I'm not seeing really a difference here. So, anyways, the originals commented out, and here's the one that I copied, and I modified the uh, the class names. So we'll just give this a good build. Ooh, what the? What did I screw up here? Oh yeah, derp. We are going to fast forward a little bit, ladies and gentlemen. I actually deleted some stuff here. So let's uh, let me look at my notes. We're going to just do some includes here. QDebug. QTCP server. QThread. We're also going to include our, QTC, or our TCP connections. Uh, I've started running again, so I'm like kind of tired. I'm not... Not a big fan of running. I don't know why, I just don't like it. All right, so virtual bool, we're gonna do listen, we're gonna override listen. And gonna override close. We're going to add port, just because I really want to. I'm going to add a protected section in here. We're going to say qthread, mconnections. Yeah, I don't know what it is. I've got these Logitech, what are they, G930. Um, it's once in a while. They just randomly cut out, and it's at like the worst time. I'll be playing a video game with some of my mates, and I'll say, hey, you know, go over here and kill this guy. And they don't, and I'm like, I hear my headset beep meaning it just, you know, it just reconnected. And I'm like, oh, you didn't hear what I said, did you? And they're like, nope, and then the whole team dies and they get mad at me, but whatever. Now, the uh, the incoming connection, this is something you'll have to be a little careful about depending on your Qt version. I've seen Qint64, I've seen Qhandle, I've seen Qint pointer. Uh, the Qt documentation says they're all pretty much the same and they should work, but I've actually seen it where it'll compile, it'll run, it won't issue any errors, but you'll never see an incoming connection, and then you'll have to go in and modify this variable type right here to whatever your platform takes, and unfortunately the documentation is horrible, so I'm just going to comment this and say could be a Q int 64, could be a Q handle, could be a Q int PTR, and in some really bizarre instances, I've just seen it as int. Or actually, it was, what was it, uint, unsigned integer. So I'm just going to leave that in there, commented. That way, if you have a problem, you don't have to go look it up. You can just grab one of those types. Whew. All right, so virtual void accept qint, and what am I using, qint pointer. Call this the descriptor because it's descriptive. And whoops, did 
I just hit caps lock? No, I didn't. We're going to give this a pointer to the, a connection object. So what we're going to do here, and I'll kind of flesh this out as I'm talking, is we're going to make some signals. We're going to say void accept ah, accepting. I cannot type. Man, this keyboard's possessed. You ever have one of those days where like everything just does not go great? That's kind of my day so far. And you can see it, my typing. <laughs> Anyways, so we're going to emit a signal, and the signal's going to have the handle or the socket descriptor, and it's going to have a pointer to, well, you guessed it, a TCP connection object. So we're going to actually create the connection and then move it to another thread. Let me let me see if I can actually do this. This is somewhat embarrassing. I almost feel like just stopping the video and starting over. I actually don't I don't video edit any of my videos. I've been told that I should. I just don't cuz I don't I don't really have the patience for it. Number 1, I don't have the time for it. I mean, some of these videos um depending on how many takes cuz I don't always get it in the first take. Um, it can take me two to three hours to do a video that's only 15 minutes long if it's a pretty complex topic. And by the time I'm done, I just I don't want to add logos and glittering lights and bouncing bunnies and all that garbage. I just want to get the stuff out there so people can play with it. Whoops, let me close that. So we got accept already. Damn you, cursor. Hmm, oh, yeah, that's a signal. I probably shouldn't have do that. See what I mean by having one of those days? All right, so we've got those. Am I any, anything I'm missing? Oh, yeah, I'm missing my slot here complete. All right, so we've got our basic server. Let's give this a build and just make sure this is actually going to work without exploding on us here. All right, good. So we've got some warnings, and they're just unused parameters, but uh, we'll get rid of those. So if you guys have uh, wireless headsets like wireless gaming headsets I'd be really interested in knowing what you use and how you ha how you like it because my uh, my G930 Logitech is just kinda really pissing me off I'm just gonna say it I almost threw it across the room the other day and I'm usually not like that I got it because a I like to game and B I like making tutorials and sometimes when I have this cord I like turn my head and it'll snag the headset which just Oh yeah, that's the worst. I just want to like flip the desk over when that happens. All right. Which ironically, I have a cord mouse and you know, I have a hardwired mouse and a hardwired keyboard, but a wireless headset. Don't ask me why. You probably never actually see that cute debug message right there, but you know, whatever, we'll just do it. All right. So, let's do this. address and port so when we're listening we're going to you know return false if the base class the QTCP server cannot listen if the QTPC server base class does listen then there's some extra magic we want to do here so we're gonna say M thread did I not make M thread or is my computer just being stupid here? Hmm. I did not make that. Hmm. I actually screwed up here. There we go. That should be better. Man, that was kind of scary. I would just kind of like froze and went, oh no, what have I done? Like the universe as we know it's just going to, you know, cease to exist because I screwed something up here. All right, so we're going to make a new, maybe, new Qthread. Uh, 
and I might get an email saying, why are you making a new, you know, why are you making a pointer? Why don't you just make it as a member? Um, I just wanted to, just have it. Um, you know, that it's kind of my answer when people start questioning me. I just go, oh, I just wanted to do it my way. I'm sorry, I'm the one writing the code, but don't ever tell your boss that, you know, you should always follow corporate standards, but yeah. All right, so we're gonna make a new thread and we're gonna make a new connections object. Um, remember, the connections object is what's going to hold all of our all of our connections here, and we need to connect up some signals and slots here. So we're going to connect, and of course it's right over my notes, so I can't see what I'm connecting. There we go. Connect. And we're going to connect M thread. What do you guys think about the new uh, Q5 way of doing signals and slots? I actually, once I got into it, I actually kind of like it. It's a lot easier than having all the parameters and stuff in there. And we're going to connect the oops, TCP connections. Start. So when the thread is started, we're going to call TCP connections start. That's important because we're going to move the connections object that we're creating in the line 18 here. We're going to move that to a separate thread. And uh, last but surely not least, this is probably something you might not have seen before unless you've watched some of my threading tutorials. We're going to give it a parameter of queued connection. Um, Signals and slots don't always connect the right way. You can have what's called a direct connection, an auto connection, or a queued connection. A direct is like a one-to-one. -one. Um, typically, you do that if they're on the same thread. Auto typically defaults to a direct connection, which we just talked about. And then a queued connection, which we're making, is for cross-threaded uh, signals and slots. So you throw it into a queue, and then queued does some magic under the hood and says, hey, when it's ready, you know, pull this bucket and look for signals that are you're connected to. So if you try to do an auto or a direct connector, you just don't specify it, it's going to have problems. So, all right, what are we doing now? This. Whoops. QTCP server. Oh, no, we just want TCP server, sorry. We're going to accepting we're going to take the accepting signal from our server object here. Oops, I got an extra comma. And wire that up to the connections accept slot. And if we, I'm going to kind of jump into here. If we go into the connections accept slot, that's where we're actually making the TCP connection. Here, you know, the socket, we're setting the socket descriptor, which actually accepts the connection. So we're not actually, you know, going to accept the connection in incoming connection. We're going to actually just forward it. All right, so. All right, so we're going to do finished. My eyes got a little blurry for a second there. Bear with me. I had, uh, if you've never watched any of my videos, you don't know, but um, I had uh, PRK eye surgery. It's similar to LASIK. And uh, I'm almost, I, I'm actually at 2020. One eye is 2025. But I'm very happy with the surgery. But sometimes my vision just kind of fluctuates in and out, and I got to stop for a second and just kind of. And I think. The doctor explained it to me. It's kind of weird if, if you're interested. Otherwise, just put me on mute because I'm going to go on a rant here. <laughs> uh, it's basically, you know, your eyes are adjusting to not wearing glasses. So sometimes your eyes think they still need glasses, even though they don't, if that makes any sense. So while I have 2020 vision, my brain still thinks that I need glasses. So it says, whoa, where are my glasses? And your vision gets like, blurry for a minute. 
All right, so what we're doing now is we're saying when the server is finished, we're going to tell the TCP connections class, remember it's the container that's going to hold all our connections, to quit. We're going to say, hey, stop what you're doing, kill all the connections, you know, die essentially. All right, so, and I'm just for the sake of time going to copy and paste. I don't know why I didn't do that earlier. Maybe I just like talking. All right, so we're going to connect the uh, M connections. TCP connections finished to this TCP server and we want the finish socket here all right whoo so let's kinda of go through these super quick I know I talked about them but the, the first connection we're making is the thread started to the TCP connections start because we're going to be moving this to another thread, the connections object, we're going to move it to a thread. The server that we're in, the accepting signal, is going to wire up to the TCP connections accept, and that's where the socket's actually going to be created. Um, we cannot create the socket here because this is going to be on the parent thread, the main thread, or the GUI thread as it's called. So if we create the socket here and then we move it over, we cannot connect signals and slots to it. So we have to create it on the parent thread. Uh, I should say the thread that it's going to live on. And then we're going to take this object finished and tell the connections object to quit, which is going to kill, maybe. Let's go look at it real quick. Yeah, it's going to remove all the sockets. And remember, in remove sockets, if it's running, it's going to actually disconnect all the signals and slots and then close the socket down. And then we're going to, in the connections object we're going to say when it's finished TCP server is going to be finished is that right finished or maybe is that complete yeah that should be complete not finished there we go alright so basically what we're saying is once the connections class let's pull that up let's look at quit here yeah We'll call it quit. It'll do everything. It'll close all the sockets down. Say, hey, I'm finishing. And it's dying breath. It'll say, I'm done. It'll admit finished. And when it does that, the server's going to know down here that, hey, it's done. All the connections are closed. We can safely shut the server down. All right. Here's where the magic happens. The problem is you cannot have, say, a thousand connections on your main thread because it will drag your GUI thread down. So we're going to make a thread, which we've already done, and we're going to say M connections move to thread. And then we're just going to give it the M thread. Now let me explain this for a quick second. Some of you may be going, well, why are you doing that? And some of you are going, well, duh. Well, the reason why we do move to thread is there's a very lengthy article about threading done correctly in Qt. And what a lot of people do, well, they will inherit the Qthread class, and then they will override the run function. And that's actually not the way it was meant to be done. Um, the actual author of the Qthread class posted a very lengthy, you can find it out on Google, a very lengthy article about how that's incorrect. So the correct way of working with a thread, because a Qthread is not a thread, it's a wrapper around a thread. So the Qthread, you create that, and then you move objects onto that thread. So it'll take a reference and shove it onto that thread that it holds internally. All right, now we take our thread and we're going to start it. Last but surely not least, we're going to return true because we're listening now. All right, so I know this was a little bit of a beefy function. We'll go through it real quick. We'll create our thread, create our connections, wire our signals and slots, take the connections and move it to the thread. Notice how the thread's not running yet. So we're just taking that pointer and moving it to the uh, thread. And then we're going to say thread start. And when we start that thread, this connection's instantly going to fire off. It's going to say the thread started. It's going to be emitted. And connections start is going to be called. So if we go into connections and start, we'll see connections started on blah, blah, blah. And that's why we have Q thread current thread, because we'll see that's a different thread. And we should actually, now that I think about it,
That way we can see their different threads, right? So you'll see the server and the connections are on two different threads here. Whew, that's a little bit of a mouthful there. All right, so now we're gonna go the close. Um, I started watching, I don't know if anybody out there watches Walking Dead, there's a new spinoff called Fear the Walking Dead. While I watched the pilot and I thought it was entertaining, I'm not sure how I really feel about it. It's not the same, you know? It's just there's something... It doesn't have that gritty, raw factor that I really like in Walking Dead. But I like kind of dark shows. Like, I love Breaking Bad, I love Walking Dead. Um, so anyways, in close, we're going to just, you know, a debug of we're closing the server, we're going to emit finished, and then we're going to actually close the server. Now, when we emit finished, this is going to fire off. It's going to say server's finished, so the connection should quit. Now, remember, we're going to wait down here. We'll actually have a completed port. This is just something I wanted to add. So we'll say if is listening return And I wanted to do this so that I could return a default port. Um, because as we inherit this class, different protocols have a different default port. Like web, web traffic is typically 80, uh, FTP is typically 21, you know, things like that. All right, so incoming connection. This is going to be the single most frustrating thing about this program. Not because of its complexity, it's actually very simple, but because of the way Qt versioning has been handled. And I kind of touched on this with the uh, Qt int pointer. And remember, it's in the header here how it might be different depending on your operating system and your cute version and your cute build and all this other stuff so just beware if you you try this and you get no connections switch that variable type play around with it and you'll you'll get it eventually but if you're going to uh, deploy this on multiple operating systems you may actually have to re-implement that for each OS which is kind of a pain and really pisses me off Attempting to accepting, yeah, that made no sense. No, my uh, my new job is actually I like it. It's quite fulfilling. But there, I've I've worked there before for about ten years. But um, there's a gym, and it's like a couple floors down from me. And it's free of charge, of course. So now I'm going to the gym every day. So I'm just you know you work an eight-hour day and then you're just tired. Let's go. What did I do wrong here? Excuse me. What did I do wrong here? Oh, I see what I did. I was looking at my notes. I'm sorry. So we're going to take a TCP connection. Whoa, I do not want to print that. Now, notice how we're making a new object and we're not giving it a parent. We're not saying this. We're doing that specifically. And I'm pointing that out because you may be inclined to do this so that you have um, resource handling, you know, memory management basically, so that when this class is closed, it'll close the connection object. Do not do that. We're creating this object in memory without a parent, so it's just out on the heap out by itself with no parental supervision. We're doing that because it's going to get moved to a thread and you cannot have a parent object when you do that. You'll get all sorts of errors. And then we're just going to call the accept function which is well right below and we could have very easily um, done both of these in the same one I'll be the first one to admit that, but I wanted to break it up so it was very um, very easy to understand the logic, the flow of the application of what was going on here. So
here we're going to take that individual connection object that we just created in incoming connection. We're going to move it to the thread. And then we're going to emit accepting. So the reason why we're doing this via signal slots instead of just creating a function and moving is because you cannot cross call functions through different threads. Meaning if you have uh, object A on thread 1 and object B on thread 2, you can't call those directly. You need to use signals and slots and that goes back to our cute, cute connection signals and slots that we're using because we're doing a cross thread operation there or I should say a cross thread message if you will. So we're going to emit accepting and when we look at this we're going to say this accepting connects to connections accept and remember connections accept is where the socket's going to be created etc etc etc. That's a mouthful here. Now hope my, my goal for this is to actually get this class done which we're almost done and then wire it up into our GUI and then maybe do a bit of debugging in case I screwed something up really bad and hopefully get an actual connection running tonight. But I gotta really watch that clock because YouTube gets kinda squirrely on me. Maybe it's not YouTube, maybe it's my encoder that I'm using. Alright, so... Yeah, but anyways, like I was saying, let's change this to Q warning. The Fear of the Walking Dead, while I thought it was all right, it was kind of slow. I mean, it was an hour and a half long, and it was a lot of just following this junkie around uh, the mean streets of, I think, Hollywood or L.A., I couldn't tell which. And it was like, eh, it was all right. It wasn't the greatest thing. But then again, you know, Walking Dead Season 2, they spent the entire season walking around the woods looking for some little girl. So they could have collapsed that thing into, like, two episodes. Alright, so, and here I am actually going to delete the M connections object. Normally I do a delete later, but I want to actually hard delete that and just get rid of it because we're done processing everything and I don't want to wait around. I do not want to wait around for it, you know what I mean? So, QDebug. And it may seem a little hypocritical, but I'm going to explain why in just a second. Why I'm deviating from my standard here. Alright, you know, quitting thread. Alright, we're going to wait. Oops, I'm sorry. First we're going to quit. Then we're going to wait. And then we are going to delete the thread. It was like really cloudy and thundering and lightning earlier, so I'm kind of hoping we don't get any storms. Because I will shut my computer off because I love my computer. Alright, so this is why I'm deviating. In the complete, remember, um, we're not calling complete until the TCP connections has closed all the sockets and done all its nice little cleanup here. We'll call complete, and we'll jump down here, and if there's no thread, we're just going to exit out. Oh, I feel like I'm going to sneeze. I can promise you that if I do sneeze, I will not pause the video so that you can witness my beautiful sneeze. Oh, excuse me. All right, so <laughs> we're going to delete the connections object because we're done with it. The reason why we're not doing delete later is because we have no idea when Qt is going to do its uh, its cleanup. And we have no idea when it's going to delete that object for us. And we want to get rid of this thread. Well, if we do delete third, delete later and then we do you know delete thread, we don't know in which order those are going to be deleted. So if we do delete later on connections and thread and Qt decides to delete the thread first, even though it still has a connections object, it's going to have a segment fault. Now I'm sure there's ways to code around that and fix that problem, but I just want to take the easy route and I just want to make sure it's deleted in the order that I want it deleted in. 
Let's give this a good build. Hopefully we don't have any problems. Wow, we lucked out. Of course, I probably just like totally jinxed myself, right? All right, so. Whew, all right. We got a little bit of work here on the GUI, and then we're good here. Include TCP server. Oops, I don't want those. There we go. There we go. So there's our beautiful little server. Sometimes I feel like Bob Ross. If any of you guys know him, he's that artist that had like the afro thing going on, even though he's a white guy. And he would paint these beautiful little trees, and it was just hilarious to listen to him. We're going to paint some beautiful little code. Um, in case you're wondering what QHost address any is, um, you can actually have multiple IP addresses, and typically what a server application will do is you'll take a specific IP address and bind to that. We're just going to say any, just because, well, I'm lazy. Um, we may actually do later where we do specific IP addresses and enumerate through them and all that, but that's more of an advanced tutorial. So we're going to say if we were able to listen, run some code, otherwise don't run some code. We're gonna All right, so server started. Ta da! I must want to like throw some theme music in there, like, yeah, it started. I'll throw a critical. Oh man, I really feel like I'm gonna sneeze. See, I pet my cat and um, then I started writing code and I know at some point I like itched my nose or whatever and now I'm gonna sneeze. Damn cat strikes again. All right, so we're going to M server close and then we're gonna set that. So, whew, moment of truth here. Save and run. So our server was created. Let's try to start it. All right. So dialog server created, TCP connections started. So if we actually, let's just open a telnet. And I probably should move this out of the way so you can see. Yep, we have attempted to accept connection, created the connection class, the server accepted the connection, and we have zero clients. Hmm. That's not right. Hmm. Let's do a bit of debugging here, guys, and figure out what's going on. Socket notifiers cannot be enabled or disabled from another thread. Hmm. I'm going to do a bit of debugging, and if I can't figure it out, I will debug it offline, and then the next tutorial I'll show what the problem was. But this is why we wanted those queue debug statements, so we can actually figure out what in the heck is going on here. So let's actually, let's step through this. Dialog, server started, connection started, attempting to accept connection, the connection was created. Alright, the server accepted connection. Um, connections client zero, closing server. Mm, that never actually went through here. So if we go, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Accept. Let's just do a little debugging here. I actually, this was actually requested by a few people. They're like, you need to start you know, doing your debugging on the screen so we can see your process and we'll like tell you it's nothing magical. I usually just throw a cute debug statement in there and go, hey, watch this. <laughs> you know, it's usually nothing very fancy at all. 
And uh, let's see here. Just something to get my attention. Let's clear that out. I'll bet you that's the problem, is that this connection is actually never getting triggered here. So we're just going to reconnect. Nope, hey, watch, this is in there. So TCP clients, uh, huh. This client's connections count. <laughs> I'll bet you we forgot to actually add that in here. I think that's the problem. Uh, let's see here. Connection. And we probably need to do this. Connect, oops. Hmm, maybe I don't want to do that. Let me think about this for a minute here. Because we created the connection on the server, right? We admitted that. We're going here. To accept, hey, watch this popped up. Mm -hmm. Let me look at my connections here. Let's do this. Let's go queue, thread, current thread. Let's move that object in here and insert this and then emit the connected object because it was barking about the sockets not being connected here. All right, so let's, I'm gonna try it one more time and if it doesn't work, I'm probably just gonna stop this video, do a little debugging and I'll throw it in my next video here. So we've got that in here. We're gonna actually, let's see if I can get this on the screen. All right, so we've got one client but we're not getting any signals and slots from that client. What did we do wrong here? I bet I know what the problem is. Let's, all right, so another thing is whenever you stop, you should always watch to see, make sure we're deleting like the socket and we're calling destroyed and all that. I think I know what the issue here is. Um, we're gonna actually go connection Let's look at our connection object here. Yeah, we need to set that socket. That's the problem. I don't have my notes for that up with me, so I'm just kind of winging this here. But the fact that I've been working on this for months and months and months is kind of like, you know, it's just burned into memory at this point. So once we've moved the thread, then we're going to say connection to set socket. Socket. And that'll wire up the signals and slots, and that should work. And if it does, I'm going to do the happy dance. All right, so let's get this bad boy over here. Hey, all right, so now we've got ready read signals. So we have got a working TCP server here. Let's actually close this. Oops, I forgot you got a. Damn you, Linux. I'm just going to close the window. Yep, okay, and then remote ho we got a socket error, remote host closed. Well, we figured that, so we're removing the socket. So we can see the socket got removed. Socket is open, attempting to close it, deleting socket, client count zero. So you can see that it's actually done the cleanup and all that. So let's just leave this thing running and let's, uh, let's get a little funky. My daughter hates it when I say that, let's get funky. Anyways, so we're gonna load up Siege and if you watch the previous tutorials, you know what this is. If not, it's a, a website testing tool where you can put a website under siege by hammering it with connections. So we're going to make 800 connections and we're just going to hit our address here. And let's actually clear this out so we can see this thing going in real time. There we go. And you can see how we've got all our connections here. Server is now under siege. So if I hit that, boom. You can see how it all, well, if you really wanted to go through here, you could see how it's, you know, going through all these connections. And it'll go through 800 of them. You know, like there's 719 client count. Let's see if we got, uh, I 
can't seem to find that magic spot where there's actually 800. Anyways, you get the picture. And it goes through and it cleans up each and every connection. Now, someone's going to say, well, you're getting errors. There's a remote host closed. That's actually because we connected the error signal in slot. If we didn't connect that, we just get the disconnect signal. And if we look at Siege, you see we got zero hits um, because we're not actually returning an HTTP protocol. And that was over six seconds. So um, if we start actually um, just closing those, like let's, like let's try it. Why not? I've got a few minutes left in this video. Uh, connected. So as soon as we connect, actually, as soon as we ready read, did we get ready reads? I don't remember. We should have. Yeah, we're getting ready reads because it's going to send the HTTP protocol. We're just going to go. Um, We'll get socket socket dot close. We should do a little defensive programming here. If not, socket return. I just want to actually see this working in siege here. And let's actually close that out. Load this bad boy back up. Start this. Get my command line back up. We're gonna hammer this with siege again. Yeah, and you can see how now it's actually doing it. And it actually gave up um, because after so many connections, failed transactions, uh, 1,800 failed transactions, they're failed because we're not returning the HTTP protocol. But you can see that in under two seconds, we handled 1,800 connections. So, And that's just on my little Linux box here. Um, kind of running out of steam, getting a little tired. So I think that's all for this tutorial. Uh, I hope you found this educational and entertaining. Um, this source code and all other source code is out on my website, voidrealms.com. Um, also, be sure to join the Void Realms Facebook group. I added eight people today. I think we're like up to like 270 programmers in there. And it's just a free-for-all. You go in and ask whatever questions you got. All right. Thanks for watching.